I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Good morning and welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ in Russellville, Kentucky. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. And we are, our building is located at 689 North Main Street in Russellville. And as I always say, if you're familiar with Russellville and you know where Kentucky Fried Chicken is, then you know where we are. We are right next door. So come and be with us. Bring your Bibles. Let's study God's Word together. We give praise, honor, and glory to God, as I said, at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning and then 7 o'clock on Wednesday evenings. And we thank you for listening to Bible Talks, which comes to you every Saturday morning at 905 on uh, WRUS, but you can also see us on a video version of this program if you just go to YouTube and type in Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky. We'll pop right up and you can see our YouTube video there. You can also find us do, by doing a Google search on the internet and you can find our website, which has links to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and many other resources. Contact us. You can email us, Northside Church of Christ at hotmail.com, and we'd be happy to answer any Bible questions that you may have. After a few weeks being away, it's good to be back with Nick Greenman this morning. Nick, how are you? I'm doing fine. And I was sitting there wondering when I was getting ready to get on the show, like how long has it been since I've been on the show? It's been quite a while. Uh, I know we've had the elections and stuff up here in Kentucky and that kept me away. Uh, but I'm sitting there still trying to wrap my mind around everything. Like what kept me out from so long? But but here we are. Uh, and uh, you started Proverbs last week. And so I'm super excited about getting into it as well yeah. today with chapter two. But let me just uh, offer some introduction material for who I am and where I'm at in case there's somebody in the uh, central Kentucky area, not too far from me. If you want to come on out, our address is 3628 Lovely Road. That's Highway 411 there in Butler County. And so if you are within driving distance, we love to see you on Sundays. We have Bible class at 10 o'clock. We'll transition over to an hour of worship at 11. And then we'll uh, reconvene that evening at 5 o'clock for another hour of worship. Midweek Bible studies, Wednesdays at 7. And so we'd love to get to meet you, get to know you. And, of course, if you want to get in touch with me directly, my telephone number is 270-999-2600. And as you mentioned, we're going to start uh, conti or continuing in a study I began last week in Proverbs. Now, you and I have been going through the books of the Bible for the past year and a half or so. And um, uh, during your hiatus there, we I, I covered some other various topics and uh, just decided uh, once I got into reading Proverbs, uh, it just kind of motivated me. So I thought maybe we'd take a little bit of a break from the uh, overview of the Bible, and we'll get back to that at some point. Maybe we'll drop a few here and there. We would like to finish. We got as far as Acts, and we'd like to cover the epistles at some point. So this will give us some time to rework uh, how we want to pursue those lessons and, uh, and then get back to those uh, for you all, uh, the listening audience. But if you will take your Bibles today and turn to Proverbs 2, we're going to attempt to cover a chapter a week. As uh, you'll see, yes, it's Proverbs, but we're going to be studying a wide range of subjects. What we definitely want to do this go around, though, is, is read, uh, if we can, the entirety of the chapters, discuss briefly uh, the meaning behind them, looking at the value of wisdom uh, written primarily by Solomon, we believe, and uh, look at the lessons that we can learn to apply to our character as Christians so that when we are studying the distinct doctrine of Jesus Christ, we have a better appreciation for the difference between good and evil, especially, and I think it's especially needed in our society today. Uh, we've had a lot of times throughout history where obviously the Bible's always needed, but I know in, in my lifetime and in yours, Nick, this has been one of the most um, divided and really scariest times in society that I've seen uh, in, that I can personally remember of things that affect uh, myself, things that affect my children, my children's children. And uh, where are we going to leave this world? Uh, what kind of state are we going to leave this world in in the years to come? And we've got to stick up for God's word. There are too many people sticking up for the folly of 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 foolishness uh the folly of uh of the sins of the world and as the bible repeatedly teaches us uh woe to the man that calls you know evil good 
And so uh, we need to get back to some of these basic principles, just to understand how to be good people. I mean, uh, come on, you know, when we look at these passages, it's about building character of wisdom. And he teaches us about the wisdom of God, first and foremost. And you can go back and see the introduction to that in our last week's lesson from Proverbs 1. Uh, but in chapter 2, we really start to see the beauty of it and uh, what it accomplishes for us. Uh, so, Nick, why don't you start us off, and we'll try to do our best to read through and uh, discuss these verses as we go along. Yeah, so Proverbs chapter 2. My son, if you will receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, make your ear attentive to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And he stores up and excuse me, he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of, in, of justice, and he preserves the way of his godly ones. Then you will discern righteousness and justice and equity in every good course. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Yeah. I think Discretion... that's a good stopping point uh, right there. Um, we could read the entire chapter, but then we got to go back and review everything that we just read. And, you know, when we look at all the little points in these 10 verses, these, as I called them last week, kind of like tweets, you might say, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, these little nuggets uh, of, of of pieces of wisdom. Um, I think the word is pithy. Uh, I've always seen that in a negative sense, but I think it's actually a positive word. It's just showing, uh, you know, short words of wisdom and, and things of this nature. Because I want to go back to verse one for just a moment and remind us that like last week, we're talking about a son receiving wisdom from a father. And, and that should mean something. It really should, especially mm -hmm. in today's society, when you have a lot of the youth that don't respect their fathers as they should, and a lot of fathers that aren't being the fathers that they should. Mm -hmm. But when you got Chris, a father, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so I was watching a TED Talk that really hits to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the woman was talking about how uh, a lot of the broken homes where the kids will grow up and to be rebellious and and there's going to be a lot of jail, drugs, uh, and all of that uh, usually comes from a broken home where the father is absent. And and yet most of that is mitigated when the mother and the father stay together. Uh, and and so uh, being able to work through differences, being able to, uh, you know, take one for the team, I guess, for some couples yeah. because they're raising kids. That's more important than their own ways they, that they feel sometimes because these kids, their, their entire futures are dependent upon uh, the, on the stable home. But what was interesting, she said, this was something she brought out. She said the the numbers were so drastic about the success of, of the kids between the the families that had the mother and the father versus the families with just the mothers. But if you just look at the families with the fathers where the mother is absent, the number is very, very close to the homes with the mother and the father that the uh, the distinct difference is does not exist. And so the the variable there that seems to be the most critical for the uh, the welfare of that child is a present father. Uh, not to say that mothers aren't important because they certainly are, but we have to stress that how important fathers are and fathers are often the ones who are going off doing their own things and abandoning the family, it would seem. And so we, we have to see the importance of a father being a father. Uh, and in this present age, as you were talking a minute ago, how important is it now to see a man step up and be that leader in his home? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's one of the problems that we have in our society is that we don't, as the scripture says, incline our ear to wisdom because when the father speaks, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people just have this attitude. They're going to shut down. They don't want to be told what to do. Um, they don't want to respect that authority. And I've said this a million times, even in this program, you cannot reject the authority in your home and then show up at a church building and talk about how much you love God. Mm -hmm. Everything in the Bible that God wants us to do toward him 
he usually gives us an analogy and an equal counterpart that we understand in the flesh. Um, I've been studying in another program that I do called Truth and Reason on Sunday nights. You can find that on YouTube. But I've been going through Ephesians right now or last week. We talked about Ephesians in the marital relationship between a man and a woman, how Paul the Apostle talks about how the church is married to Christ. And he says, this is a mystery. This is a profound knowledge that uh, I speak concerning Christ and the church because he expected them to understand what marriage was. People today, they don't understand what marriage is. People today, Hebrews chapter 11 or 12, talking about the discipline of, uh, of a child to a father. And it says, we honored our fathers. How much more so should we honor the father's spirits and live? <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. You know, I mean, you go on the assumption that people know how to behave as human beings. And that way they can translate that into their spiritual life. But I tell you, it, it's making me scared of mm -hmm. the fact that how are people ever going to come to the Lord if they don't value and treasure the commands that are taught to them in their youth? And yeah. obviously from the good source, mm -hmm. I know, as you pointed out a moment ago, there are a lot of fathers that aren't stepping up to the job. Right. This is a motivation for both because it's what God does for us. And he goes on to say in verse two, you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. I mean, we've, we both raised children and how many times have we heard over the years, we tell our child to do something and they say, I can do it or I know how. <laughs> You know, as though they don't need your instruction. Well, at some point, they've learned from you. At some point, they don't need you to do it for them or instruct them because you have taught them. And that, that should be a good day. You know, not just the child way or a child's explanation, but where their heart has come to understanding what they're doing. That's mm -hmm. it's kind of a proud moment for a parent. Oh, yeah. And he, he goes on to say, you need to cry out for discernment. You need to run. You need to run to your parent and say, what do I do? Mm -hmm. How do I deal with this? Make decisions in life based upon the wise people that God has put there for you. Yeah. Now, I also uh, was listening to a fellow talk about how is there's something that causes kids to uh, to just completely shut the parents off, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's an age there where the kid knows more than the parent does. Yeah. <laughs> and but yet by the time they get to about age 24 or something that switch is turned off and they look at their parents as as somebody who was uh someone full of wisdom to listen yeah. to but what was interesting what he said was is that the kids are not so arrogant to think that nobody has any wisdom because they will find an adult that they deeply respect right. for that guidance and so it would be wise <laughs> for uh for parents to keep their kids around godly men and women exactly. that they will look up to for that mentorship during that time period where there seems to be that conflict between parent and teenager. Uh, and and that, that's okay too, because uh, it, it takes a village to raise people and, and to see the other people reinforce what we as parents have been teaching. I mean, that's, that's so valuable. Yeah. Uh, that is very valuable. So well, it's wise for me as a parent to say, I may not have the answer to this situation, mm -hmm. but I've got somebody I want you to talk to. You right. know, how many times as a father have you said, well, go ask your mother about that? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's not just passing the buck, as we say. That's like your mother has some wisdom and some insight to what you're asking me, that maybe she is the person. Maybe it's a grandparent. Maybe it is a neighbor, a friend. But yes, godly people put in their paths because if, okay, a couple things. One, you must discipline your children. If you don't, somebody will. Right. It might be out there in the training. world. It'll be in the schools. It'll be in the job. It'll be, it'll be it, it, the indoctrination of, of society today. If you don't teach and ground your children, and this is what they th throw in our faces today. Oh, you're just brainwashing them. What's the world doing? Mm -hmm. Satan is the king of brainwashing, you know, that's just a term people throw around. The more you apply yourself to something, that's what's going to get stuck in your brain. And that is how you're going to think. That's the way human brains work. So we need to make a choice. Everything in Proverbs 2 hinges on receive my words. And then this person makes a decision. I'm going to incline my ear to those words. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cry out for that discernment. I'm going to apply it to my life and I'm going to search for it as a hidden treasure. And then it says, 
then you'll understand. Then you'll understand. It doesn't, it doesn't come by osmosis. It doesn't come accidentally, but it comes through the application of these lessons in our life. And, and he makes the point here in Proverbs 2 that you got to seek it. And I like verse 4, how he says, If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, um, how, to what extent do humans go to pull up the silver out of the ground? Mm -hmm. To what extent do we go to find and, and polish out the precious stones of the earth? I mean, we spend uh fortunes upon fortunes just to get those precious metals and stones and and so prob uh, not Proverbs, but job chapter 28 really highlights that same idea of, uh, to what depths we go to bring out these precious uh stones and metals but yet there's something more precious that we need to be seeking for and that's wisdom and and so it, it's amazing how job is hitting on these very same elements that we're seeing that solomon is writing about here in proverbs chapter two right. and so wisdom is incredibly important to find and we need to be seeking god uh for that true wisdom because there's a way that seems right to a man but its end is death and of course we'll get into that later on when we get into chapter uh, 14 and chapter 16 of proverbs but we have to surrender ourselves, uh, lean not our own, not lean not on our our own understanding, but lean upon the Lord, uh, which is uh, the next verse, uh, next chapter in this study. Exactly. But, you know, if a person has understanding, where where do they get that wisdom from? You mm -hmm. know, people can't pat themselves on the back and brag on themselves. Um, a couple times in this chapter, it uses the term "then you will understand." And that's only going to come after that digging, after that groping, after that finding. You know, that's mm -hmm. what the New Testament, the term that's used there. He's not far from each one of us. We've got to reach out, grope for him. We've got to find them. Uh, Jesus teaches us to seek. And um, and so when we look at kind of the end of what we were reading a moment ago, uh, verse 10, just to kind of uh, put a cap on that, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, the reading picks up with what we're going to do with it, our responsibility toward it. It's going to cause us to make good decisions in life, to uh, rethink things, you know, before we make foolish decisions. Let's go ahead and read the end of the chapter. We only have a few minutes left. So um, uh, let's pick up with verse 11. Discretion will guard you. Understanding will watch over you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. From those who leave the paths of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness, who delight in doing evil and rejoice in the perversity of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways, to deliver you from the strange woman, from the adulteress who flatters with her words, that leaves the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her tracks lead to the dead. None who go to her return again, nor do they reach the paths of life. So you will walk in the way of good men and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be uprooted from it. Wow. That took a real turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure Especially did. when it comes to... Uh, I think sometimes the selfish understanding in life that it's all about me, it isn't. Mm. I mean, look at the people, I mean, we've already mentioned this, look at the people you associate with in your life. Right. And, you know, who, who's who's probably the one person that has the greatest influence on you in life? You know, it's the, it's, it's, it's the spouse or the, uh, the love interest, you know, that you have in life, the one you mm. want to do everything for and give everything for. Is this a person of any count? Is this a person that's seeking the same wisdom of God? I'll tell you what, you know, you, you want to, and I've said it a million times, you want to find the right person, you need to be the right person. And that way the right person can seek you out. I don't mean somebody that just fits you, but somebody that has a fear of God. And of course, it won't come to the end of the book, but Proverbs 31 talks about a woman who fears the Lord. She's mm -hmm. the one to be praised. She's, she's the one you want to seek after. She's the one that you want to be spending the time with. She's the one that you want raising your children. You know, look at what it says in verse 11. Discretion will preserve you. And one of the big ways that that's going to happen is not just knowing the word of God, but living by it and spending time with the people that do the same thing. They're going to make the right decision. You don't have to worry about going to, quote, hang out with your friends 
and get caught up in some kind of sinful activity. We're going to see more and more of this as these Uh chapters go on. Chapter three, chapter four, it deals with the kind of company that you keep in a big way. And it says you want to be delivered from evil. You want to stay on the path of righteousness, not leave it. And he says, you, you, you know, there are people out there that rejoice in doing evil. I mean, surely that can't be right. Mm-hmm. Well, it is. <laughs> just look out the, just look out the door of your house sometime, and you're going to see people that behave that. Way. Don't we say every day we turn on the news or hear something like, "Why? What are people thinking? What are they doing? Why do they behave that way?" Well, there was a time in history, to... Chris. There was huh? a time in history where the thoughts of men were evil continually. Wow, and, I wonder. Uh, it, it's frightening <laughs> to think about what what. Uh, uh, what sins were being embraced at that time? I mean, I, I don't think we're that far yet. I don't think every man's thoughts are evil continually. But if if they're not, then imagine how worse it was during the days of Noah. Sure. Oh, man, I mean, just... you know, we, we paint a picture, and I don't want to be negative here. <laughs> you probably already determined that we are. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of good people in this world. Yeah. As, as we've already said in this program, and we may rant and rave about all the evil that's out there. But uh, we, we, we talked about find the good people. Let them mm-hmm. be pe- the people that influence you. Let them be the people that influence your children. They are out there. But if you're not seeking them, you're never going to find them. Mm-hmm. If the only people that you associate with are worldly people, then I can see why your impression of the world is that way. So at what point? And I'll tell you something that's going to happen or not going to happen is God's not going to send a flood and start all over. He's yeah. going to send the end Mm-hmm. the end and when the end comes there's no second chances here everybody had a second chance even when noah built that ark he took a century to do it and who came with him only the people in his family we need to think about that yeah choose carefully who you spend your time with be delivered from the immoral people in your life um understand the direction that they are going and don't follow it One of the, I don't know, one of the arrogant things that I think we have sometimes as Christians is we think we can save everybody. You you can't. Um, You you just you just can't. We'll try. We teach and preach. And that's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. But it has to fall upon good hearts and those that cry out for discernment. And if somebody doesn't want that discernment, they are not going to become Christians and they're not going to go to heaven. I know that that hurts the heart of a lot of people to to come to that realization that you're not the savior. Jesus Christ is your savior. And until people come to him, they're not going to be saved. Yeah. And that's we gotta the be careful. Truth of it. Yeah, we got to be careful about being unequally yoked, uh Absolutely. whether we're talking about marriage or business partnerships or all of it. Because being unequally yoked with these unbelievers and these worldly people is just going to be a, a recipe to cause us to be deceived and have yeah. our good morals corrupted. Uh, and so we need to be careful about who we associate with. Uh, love all and try to save as many as we can. Yeah. But those that we get close to need to be people who want us to go to heaven. And you got to have some motivation in your life to want to bring the people that you claim to love to the Lord. That's the best thing for them. This isn't about you. This isn't about your selfish ways. This is about providing for them a hope and a chance. And are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to sacrifice that that might be the case? And what exactly are you sacrificing? Hey, you're just sacrificing sin. You you, you want to give that up anyway. You really do. Whether you're an evil person or not, you really don't want to be treated like evil people treat one another, do you? No, you don't. You want people to be honest with you and fair with you. You want a good life. And you can have that in the Lord. But as long as you fight against him and won't listen to his words of discernment, then you can just sit around all day wondering why things aren't getting better. And now you know. Thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Bible Talks. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name.